good evening everyone uh, i'm dr sai santosh so today's class will be on orthognathic surgery exclusively oh, i have previously taken lectures for of orthognathic surgery for the previous neat going batches uh, to my knowledge i think uh, the next neat exam will be in the december or something okay so for that batch exclusively i'm just going to cover on the basics of orthognathic surgery okay i completely understand that i've dealt with the uh, craniofacial ba basics and craniofacial syndromes before but that is for the previous batches okay i want the fresh batches who are giving mds for the first time or for the batches who have finished their internship and preparing for the second time okay to concentrate more on this lecture as this lecture uh, is more about basics okay uh, this will be a short and sweet lecture okay uh, nothing more fussy about it okay so i hope everyone knows what is orthognathic surgery right okay orthognathic surgery is something which everyone is interested about in omfs and even the dental dentist population everyone is interested about orthognathic surgery because it is something which is about cosmetics it changes the standard of living the quality of life of a patient their appearances and their social well being as well so uh, this is one field where the omfs or someone uh, visions themselves as a plastic surgeon okay whatever work the plastic surgeon does parallelly the oral and maxillofacial surgeon can give the same beautiful results okay so uh, let us go ahead uh, let us go ahead and uh, see how this specialty has evolved uh, right now this is the very basic okay uh, this is how in the olden days they used to mobilize the maxilla okay nowadays we know that we'll use uh, uh sometimes chisel and mallet and we'll use burrs okay we'll use straight hand piece and burrs okay and we'll perform an osteotomy so then we'll use our instruments we'll use our chisel and mallet we'll use our tessiers uh, uh, separators uh, we'll use our rowan williams forceps so we use a lot of forceps we use a lot of instruments but in the olden days when there are no instrumentation when there are no uh, hardcore rules for the orthognathic surgery this is the way it used to be performed you can see the picture there it's an un incompletely mobilized maxilla so it was managed by a roll extension uh, so a 1.5 kg of weight was applied on the hospital bed so if you see uh, uh, the behind part of this picture here there is a 1.5 kg weight okay like how in the gym when we are doing dumbbells okay they increase the weight okay or when you are doing your butterfly uh, exercises in the gym they just increase the weight for you <coughs> this is how the weight used to be increased so then the disimpaction of maxilla means the mobility of the maxilla the mobilization of the maxilla used to gradually occur over a period of 2 weeks very slowly okay this is the same principle used by our orthopedic colleagues still okay many orthopedic colleagues us usually use this roll extension still in their uh, uh, procedure okay so then omfs has evolved a lot from orthognathic surgery okay in orthognathic surgery but then due to many people okay one of the main persons because of whom we are today studying orthognathic surgery is william h bell his landmark studies his landmark studies helped us to study orthognathic surgery today and help us to dream that we can also do orthognathic surgery nothing will happen to the maxilla and mandible so before william h bell has done his landmark studies what used to happen is everyone used to question how can you fracture the maxilla or how can you fracture the mandible how can you do an osteotomy and pull it forward or get it back because won't it get necrosed that is what they used to ask 
you are austere osteotomizing the entire maxilla you are osteotomizing the entire mandible you are pulling it up you are pushing it up okay you are getting it back okay there is anterior advancement posterior placement of the maxilla everything you are doing what they used to question is so what about the blood supply of your maxilla and mandible won't it get compromised they should tell that maxilla will get necrosed mandible will get necrosed so this is not a good procedure to perform they should tell about orthognatic surgery then william h bell what he did is he did his landmark study on dogs okay so what he did is he has done maxillary osteotomy on dogs okay then he has injected a dye once the dogs are killed then he injected a dye okay then when he saw what happened to the maxilla after the osteotomy okay then he realized that though the maxilla is osteotomized okay and we have cut the maxilla though we have brought it forward what happens is the maxilla maintains collateral circulation okay so that is what william h bell told preservation of the integrity of the incisive canal or greater palatine arteries was not essential to maintain circulation even if you damage the greater palatine artery or the incisive canal during the maxillary osteotomy nothing will happen it was not essential to maintain circulation to anterior or posterior maxillary dentalar segments so what he has determined out of his so landmark study was single stage anterior posterior total maxillary osteotomies were biologically sound procedures okay we need someone to push us right we need someone to tell that these are biologically sound okay these are really good procedures and we can perform these procedures right so that is where william h bell has given us a, a great opportunity for everyone to perform axillary osteotomy okay you may very well get a question in me telling that who is the first one who has done studies on biological basis for maxillary osteotomies biologic basis for maxillary osteotomies i hope everyone writes this okay so biologic basis for maxillary osteotomies is first study done by uh, william h bell okay so i'm going to deal with more basics okay so now uh, we understood that maxilla and mandible moves in different directions okay i just told you you can advance the maxilla you can set back the maxilla you can see superiorly position the maxilla as well as you can do a clockwise or anti clockwise rotation of the maxilla in the same way mandible you can advance mandible you can get back okay so now imagine a maxilla with an aeroplane okay just imagine a maxilla with an aeroplane okay so then if you imagine a maxilla with an aeroplane so what are the movements a maxilla can do there are three movements a maxilla can do we can perform the maxilla to do three movements in an orthognathic surgery okay yaw pitch and roll these are the three movements what a maxilla can perform you may very well get a question in your neat exam on your pitch and roll movements okay i'll detailly explain you what is your pitch and roll okay uh, i hope uh, uh, till now there is clarity for everyone right i want everyone in the chat here to respond is it fine for everyone shall i continue with what is your pitch and roll okay so uh, let us go a uh, little ahead now so what is pitch okay pitch refers to rotational or 
rotational moment around a transverse or x axis i uh, understand everyone knows x axis right okay so in aviation it refers to a situation in which an aeroplane makes a sudden maneuver to ascend or descend okay either the aeroplane is ascending or descending okay so that is called as pitch okay either you can superiorly position the maxilla or it can inferiorly fall down this is what is pitch so in orthognathic surgery pitch refers to rotation of both jaws views from viewed from the sagittal plane it can also be known as clockwise or anti clockwise rotation as well okay i hope everyone gets it right okay so basically either it is ascending ascending means when the plane is taking off okay or it is descending or when the plane is landing down okay so these are the two moments in orthognathic surgery this is what we call it as pitch okay then comes the next one is yaw okay so what is yaw so yaw refers to a rotational movement around a vertical axis or mm -hmm. y axis okay that is what is yaw so in aviation it refers to sudden turn to right or left okay so rotation of the maxilla in a lateral direction in order to surgically correct the midline okay so what is yaw it refers to rotational movement around a vertical or y axis so if you uh, see the second diagram here okay this is the y axis here okay so in this y axis if you can see either it can turn to right side okay or it can turn to left side okay either of the arrows it can be okay so this is what we call it as yaw okay rotation of maxilla in a lateral direction it is so then the next one is roll okay if you can see what a roll is so it's rotational movements around an antero posterior or z axis okay movement of an aeroplane when one wing slides upward and other swings downward so imagine a flight where one wing is up and one wing is down okay that is what we call it as roll so in orthognathic surgery roll refers to vertical movements made to correct canted occlusal planes okay what is a cant cant means the occlusal plane is slightly tilted to one side okay means if you uh, i hope everyone knows what is a fox plane right in prosthodontics you would have used your fox planes okay so in fox plane okay uh, what you do is uh, uh, you will draw a line intercanthal okay and that line should be or interpupillary and that line should be parallel to your fox plane okay so if it is not parallel it is tilted to one side or the other side uh, that is known as cant okay to correct the cant we do movement known as roll movement okay roll movement refers to uh, its a rotational movement around an antero posterior or z axis okay so then the next and last dimension in orthognathic surgery is time okay that is a fourth dimension in orthognathic surgery okay so so what happens is at what time we perform the orthognathic surgery okay uh, there is something known as surgery first approach now okay we have come to a conclusion that in some cases we can as well perform the surgery first and later do the orthodontic treatment okay so that provides immediate correction of the skeletal problem so no dental decompensation before surgery no long wait for the orthognathic surgery because orthodontic treatments averagely take one and up to two years to complete so then decreased treatment time final result is achieved faster okay there are also controversy for that some uh, people tell that surgery first approach is not good and some uh, has heavily shown their results uh, with the surgery first approach they told it is completely beneficial for the patients okay so and for early surgery in the teenagers aesthetic be benefit will be earlier in the patient's life okay so then so 
time plays also plays a major role okay so uh, that is one important thing even time so that is a fourth dimension so now that i have discussed some basics now we'll discuss what are these osteotomies okay there are several maxillary osteotomies i'm talking about maxillary osteotomies exclusively in this lecture okay so these are called mid face osteotomies in mid face osteotomies you can either do a small segment of maxilla osteotomy or a total maxilla osteotomy you can do either of that either you can do uh, only a segment of maxilla for the osteotomy or total of the maxilla for the osteotomy right so then in the segment of maxilla osteotomy you can only do an anterior segment or you can do a posterior segment or you can do something known as horseshoe segment osteotomy i'm stressing on this because each of these can be a multiple choice question for you people okay just remember these things these things are really important okay so in segmental maxillary osteotomies don't worry i'll just show you the pictures as well okay i'll just ask you questions and ask you to identify by showing you the you the pictures okay which i haven't done in the previous classes actually this is the first class where i'm showing you the pictures and i'm asking you to identify as well okay so segmental maxillary osteotomy is divided into anterior segmental and posterior segmental and horseshoe and total maxillary osteotomy is divided into four types it can be leaf foot one two leaf foot two leaf foot three mid face osteotomies so these are the four types of uh, osteotomies leaf foot one two three and mid face and in leaf foot one it can be same surgical assisted maxillary expansion surgery assisted maxillary expansion same classic leaf foot one quadrangular leaf foot one got it then in leaf foot two either it can be anterior leaf foot two pyramidal leaf foot two or quadrangular leaf foot two and in the mid phase it can be zygomatic or malar maxillary okay so these are the various types of osteotomies that can be done and which is a very important classification okay so anyone of you can ask a classification like in the exam uh, they might ask you uh, what is a pyramidal leaf foot to osteotomy it comes under leaf foot to okay pyramidal osteotomy comes under leaf foot to okay and a zygomatic osteotomy is a mid face osteotomy simple questions they might ask you so it's a total maxillary osteotomy and they might also ask you in the exam about segmental maxillary osteotomies they might ask you uh, what is a posterior segmental osteotomy? They may show you a picture and ask you to identify the osteotomy there. Or they may show you a horseshoe osteotomy. So it can be anything. Okay. So then let us go ahead, little ahead. Now, come on. Uh, everyone get active in the chat box, please. I want everyone to be active in the chat box. What kind of osteotomy is this? I just shown you a picture there. What kind of osteotomy is this? Just identify. Anyone? Yes, I think Shruti Vaishnavi Charan has answered. So I want more people to answer. Okay, let us discuss this. This would be really good for you people if we discuss this. I think I'll continue with these classes. Uh, like uh, I'll do the continuation of this in the next class so that uh, you people will be more benefited from that. So that we can discuss the treatment plans as well in the next lecture. That would be more beneficial. Yes, Avinash has answered. Yes, everyone, this is anterior segmental 
osteotomy exactly okay so can you see there where the osteotomy was performed okay between the premolars he has performed okay and then he has done in the second picture disjunction he has done okay he has done disjunction in the second picture okay in what cases can we use this anterior segmental osteotomy any particular cases where we can use anterior segmental osteotomy i want answers in the uh, chat box in what patients can we do anterior segmental osteotomy particularly anyone okay uh, let's do this see uh, some patients may have uh, a maxillary excess okay some patients may have a gummy smile some patients may have uh, something like uh, es subnaceous um, and some patients may have anterior proclination this is a simple procedure okay and it has less morbidity compared to a total maxillary osteotomy and still many surgeons prefer this anterior maxillary osteotomy and it gives good results good enough results actually okay so i'll again discuss about the treatment planning and which cases we use what okay in the coming lecture definitely okay so then let us see the next slide identify this osteotomy what is this osteotomy Can anyone identify what this osteotomy is? I want more people to answer this. So this is something uncommon that can be asked in our exams. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, good to see so many people answering. This is a posterior segmental osteotomy. Yes, exactly. See, in many cases, some patients may come uh, with late trauma to us. Okay, uh, I think trauma would have happened some one year back and they'll come with an open bite on one side. So what we do is instead of doing an extensive procedure and mobilizing the entire maxilla to get his occlusion right, this is some simple procedure like we'll just mobilize whichever portion is required and we'll get the occlusion. So this is somewhere where this posterior maxillary osteotomy comes to uh, comes to us of much use actually because uh, in some cases, see, uh, one patient will undergo trauma, a leaf out one uh, fracture or something. He'll wait for one year and he'll come after one year to us. Okay, telling that uh, I don't have a bite on the right side of uh, my face, he'll tell. Okay, if you see what will happen is uh, the right side maxilla, okay, is a little bit impacted up. Okay, then what we can do is instead of completely mobilizing the maxilla, because if it is a comminuted fracture, the entire maxilla, if you mobilize also, it is very difficult to uh, have a control on it. Okay, so instead of that, instead of that, uh, a better thing for us is uh, just do a posterior maxillary osteotomy and get his occlusion and uh, uh, deal with the patient right. Okay. So, what is this osteotomy? This is something which you haven't seen till now. Anyone? good good to see people answering this too uh, 
I'll give some more time so that more people can answer. Yeah, I see mixed reviews here. Okay, uh, Shruti, Avnash, Vaishnu, everyone has answered horseshoe. Auja has told Leafort one. No, uh, Auja, Leafort one is something different. I'll just show you the uh, lines in a while. Okay, so this is called as horseshoe osteotomy. Okay, if you carefully read your pre prosthetic surgery chapter, okay, there is something known as horseshoe osteotomy, which is done in atrophic maxillas. Okay, so please read, uh, read about it. Okay, in your pre prosthetic surgery chapter, okay, there will be about uh, horseshoe osteotomy. Okay, and now them come on, uh, what is this osteotomy? Anyone? I want everyone mm -hmm. to answer this. Yes, uh, I think this is the most sim uh, simplest of questions that I have put forward for you people. Uh, but many times, okay, we'll go wrong in the simplest of questions. There'll be some silly mistakes which would push us through thousands of ranks back, actually. Okay, this is what is Leafort 1 osteotomy. Okay, a Leafort 1 osteotomy is like a workhorse osteotomy for us. Okay, remember, uh, you can correct a vertical maxillary excess. Okay. You can correct a vertical maxillary deficiency by pulling, by uh, advancing the maxilla forward. Okay. You can as well correct a cant of the maxilla. Okay. So you can do multiple things by doing a leafout one maxillary osteotomy. Okay. So next class, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about indications of each osteotomy and what procedure you'll do in which patient okay like in which patient we do a horseshoe osteotomy okay that would be the question in the next lecture and in the next lecture i'll also talk uh, what we prescribe for each patient and what is ideal for each patient okay so then come on uh, this is the next question what is this about Can anyone tell what it is? I'll just give some time. Uh, this may be a little bit of difficult for you people. Anyone? Anyone else wants to answer this? This is a challenging question. Okay, but uh, 
i suppose everyone should know this actually okay this is how the osteotomy is coming see osteotomy is is starting here near the lateral wall of nose okay it's going in the infraorbital ring preserving the infraorbital ring it is preserving the nerve as well down okay infraorbital now through the canal infraorbital canal it is circling then it is going down and it is reaching the posterior part of the maxilla okay so what kind of osteotomy can this be so this is what we call it as high leaf out one osteotomy remember this is called high leaf out one just remember uh, the osteotomy line how it is going this is called as high leaf out one osteotomy okay now it is the same osteotomy what i have shown you here okay is the same osteotomy okay and you can see how they have advanced okay and in the gap they have put a bone graft here what they have used is some bone chips they have used to put okay so it's the same osteotomy okay i hope everyone had a good view of the picture right you can see the bone graft they have put after advancing there is a dead space right when you advance the maxilla there will be some amount of dead space that dead space usually will be filled with bone chips or bone grafts okay so now you can see two pictures on your system okay so what are these two pictures what kind of osteotomies are these does anyone have any idea what kind of osteotomies are these yes avinash it is meant for maxillary expansion right uh, yes avinash so what kind of osteotomy is it what is the first picture and what is the second picture below see i'll give you a clue okay in the first picture they have divided maxilla into three parts you can see right there is an anterior part and both the posterior segments are separated so those are two parts so they are three parts and in the second picture the maxilla was divided into two parts that's it an osteotomy was done to divide into two parts so the answer is the first one is a three piece maxillary osteotomy and second one is a two piece maxillary osteotomy just remember okay i'm just may uh, making you to remember the picture just at least okay you may not go in depth for your neat undergraduate exams okay sorry for the post graduate exams okay but it is supposed to be like you should have a knowledge of what the picture is you should know what it is you should know the terms at least okay so that you won't waste your time in your final neat exam thinking about what it is okay so i hope everyone gets it the first picture is three piece maxillary osteotomy just store in your brain and the second picture is two piece maxillary osteotomy okay then so what kind of osteotomy is this anyone you can answer whatever you want there's no uh, nothing wrong in answering something wrong or something okay you can answer whatever you want it is fine completely fine what matters is what we answer in your final uh, neat exams this something little different shruti other than high leaf out one uh, uh, remember i told you a high leaf leaf out one and circles around the infraorbital canal right okay around the infraorbital canal it will encircle and it will save the infraorbital nerve 
while they are doing and it will go ar along the infraorbital rim a highly photon one okay so what can this be so good to see so many people answering okay i hope i'll get more answers from you people so this is called as a pyramidal leaf for two osteotomy pyramidal leaf for two osteotomy i hope everyone gets it it's a pyramidal leaf for two osteotomy okay i'll talk about the indications definitely in the next lecture this lecture i just wanted everyone to know what osteotomy is what it shouldn't be like something new i am teaching right so next lecture won't be new to you people whoever has attended this lecture won't be new because i'll be talking more in detail about this osteotomy where it can be used and everything okay so this is a pyramidal leaf for two osteotomy okay so what osteotomy is this any idea what osteotomy is this good to see so many answering here this is the most common um, it, it, sorry this is the rarest of the osteotomy that we uh, we were doing this is usually done in craniofacial syndromes actually okay in craniofacial syndromes in patients who need some orbital corrections in patient who needs a complete mid phase advancement there are some syndromes like krausen's the apert syndrome everything like that okay in the next class i'll be explaining where specifically what we are using where okay so this is a leaf for three osteotomy okay if you know what are the lines of leaf for one two and three in your trauma lectures i hope uh, everyone referred to my trauma lectures i have detailedly explained i have detailedly tracked each line of the leaf for one two and three okay so that you people can understand through which bone when it is passing and what symptoms it is giving because of the fracture line okay so i think everyone already knows that leaf foot one two and three if anyone wants to refer they can refer to my trauma lecture on uh, uh, mid phase uh, fractures okay where i've detailedly i think for one and up to two hours i have uh, uh, taken a lecture on the mid phase fractures where you can detailedly know what uh, a line looks like what a leaf foot one line what a leaf foot two line and leaf foot three looks like okay answer to this is leaf foot three okay so comes to the end of a short and sweet lecture okay so you, you can follow me and uh, you can ask your queries uh, whenever it is required okay i'll be taking more lectures i'll be taking an in depth lecture in the next class these lectures are meant for the people who are going for your basic exams okay uh, for the people who have uh, just started the neat preparation and who are there in their internship or whoever it is okay these lectures are meant for uh, you people and i hope it was uh, a informative lecture okay i would love to have your feedbacks right okay thank you